So I'm gonna make a quick video on the Easy ABL versus uh, BL Touch. Uh, hopefully if somebody's in debating which one to get and is unsure which one to get, I'm probably gonna save you about 70 bucks um, and I'm gonna talk about why the BL Touch is pretty much better than the Easy ABL Pro. I'm gonna be trying to be as fair and scientific as possible, but if I do something wrong, definitely feel free to tell me what I so let's look at the Easy ABL setup itself. Uh, right now, it's on a Hero Me Gen 3 uh, single fan mount, um, running directly connected to the power source. So the, this white wire is connected to the motherboard. Uh, that's actually powering the, I guess the kind of board that it comes with. Uh, in addition, I printed out here these one millimeter. It's about one millimeter, I think. Um, let's see if I can get this. Oh, there we go. One millimeter uh, little thing, so we'll verify that Easy A build is in fact about one millimeter uh, from the thing. So right here, uh, the trigger point. Let's, let's go ahead and um, move this here. The trigger point you'll see is um, at one millimeter. So let me see if I can get them both at the frame here. Oh, let's go this way. So when it hits one, it should trigger, and as you can verify. It does trigger at one millimeter, which is what Easy ABL wanted in their uh, um, in their docks. So I'm gonna drop it to zero here in a second. Hold on. There we go. So now we're at zero, a um, little bit above zero, I want to say. I guess my offset isn't 100% correct. Uh, all right. So we have we have this one millimeter uh, thing. As you can see, it's pretty much above one millimeter above ground. So we are pretty accurate so far in terms of, you know, what what's in the documentation. So uh, you know, we're not really off too too much. I'm going to actually move this up because the next thing people want to probably gonna say is uh, this way right here is that my gantry is uh, is sagging. Um, one, when we do our test, we're gonna. Uh, we're gonna compensate for that by moving the carriage to the left here. But uh, that's the other thing, the carriage is pretty secure. Uh, it's not moving. Uh, and in addition to that, to check for the gantry sagging, I have here a couple leveling blocks that I printed. Uh, as you can see, they're pretty accurate. So we're gonna put these babies right underneath here. And put this one, it's really difficult to do this one-handed, by the way. I put this one over here move it up so it doesn't catch that edge and then I'm gonna move this down um, once it gets to that I don't think I'll do it by see they both touch at the same time they're both about equal so at 23.5 I think I can probably go lower yeah, I think it's 23 yeah there you go um, and you can see as I'm, I'm gonna crank this up you can see they're both pretty much going up at the same time as well um, there is at least visually there is a very slight sagging uh, on this side, but it's it's really minor. Um, I, I want to say it's you know less than one millimeter. And if you watch, I think a lot of uh, videos on fixing gantries, like one of the ones I, I, I really liked was the Edge of Tech one. They talk about anything less than one millimeter uh, is is fine, and this is clearly less than one millimeter. All right, so from pretty much what I can gather, uh, let's take these off. Uh, the gantry is leveled, everything is, is leveled, the bed itself, I have the PEI sheet from Creality, um, relatively leveled, uh, they're, you know, they might have slight issues, but generally speaking, leveled. So we're going to do a probe test here, and, and you'll see uh, what I'm talking about uh, when it comes to the probe. So let's go here with the M48 probe test, and then we're also going to compensate um, because the probe test, it's gonna go in the middle of the of the board, uh, which is technically on the the right hand side. 
so it probably has a little bit of sagging. So we're going to compensate by having the probe test go on this side. So the probe test is going off, everything is uh, sort of doing 10 here. So the probe test is done, and this is actually surprisingly more accurate than uh, what I've seen in the past. Uh, in the past, I've only gotten it to about 0 0.01, uh, which is actually, I guess, technically it's about the same. So we see 0 0.0091 uh, standard deviation. We're going to do it once more uh, to see if it's you know somewhat replicatable. Uh, so let's do another probe test. And again, I'll speed through it uh, so you guys don't have to sit there watching the damn probe go up and down. So it's done, and you can see standard deviation 0 0.009412. So pretty much that's as, as, as worse as it's going to get. I'm going to go log into my um, OctoPrint here. And run the standard DV, I mean, run the M48 test uh, with maybe X20 or X25, which should put it around here, which again should compensate ish uh, for any sort of gantry sagging. So, because the carriage will be on this side, so we're gonna go ahead and do that and then uh, start it back up. So, here we are testing on this side. So, again, since it's sitting more towards the left hand side, gantry sagging should be eliminated. Uh, at least more so. I don't know if it you know, ever truly eliminated. Uh, and then we see here. So standard deviation on this side um, is 0 0.11863. And, and this is kind of what I talked about when I was on the other side. It's, you know, I, ha I haven't really ever gotten it below this point. It, it, it fluctuates from anywhere from 0 0.012 to point. Zero, zero, 008, it really sits around that number. So this is an easy ABL Mini. I'm gonna go ahead and flash some firmware to get the BL Touch going. Um, this thing runs at about uh, 70 some dollars plus shipping and handling. So BL Touch, uh, 30 bucks, not even. So I'm gonna put that in and we'll, we'll test it out. Uh, again, same setup, I'm, not, I'm really not gonna change anything much. Uh, the only thing is I'm gonna flash some new firmware. Um, Update the mount to uh, this one, uh, and then we'll rerun the test. I don't want to do the bed leveling test, like any sort of bed leveling, because um, there is a slight bug in Marlin where it doesn't compensate uh, the bed correctly. Um, so for that, we're just going to do the M48 test because that actually gives you a good indication of how accurate the uh, the probe is. Because the bed leveling itself is actually done by Marlin, so um, you know it's independent of the probe right if you have an accurate probe you're going to have a much accurate bed leveling so we have the bl touch attached now with the uh the hero me gen 3. as you can see my crusa is running it's doing some prints um so it's going to have some interference with the uh, with the trigger because um obviously with this just blasting off the the bed is constantly shaking so that's something that we didn't have with the Easy ABL Pro. So theoretically, this thing should be less accurate than the Easy ABL. So we're gonna start with the M, uh, M48 test here. Uh, there it is. I'm gonna speed it up because this is gonna be quite slow. Um, one thing that is true about the um, BL Touch is your probing is gonna be slower than the Easy ABL because it has that pin, so you can't really just kind of like crash it down uh, so, so you don't damage the pin. Um, so we're gonna have this going, I'm gonna speed it up and then we'll see how the, how the thing goes. So it's done with its uh, thing, even with all of that and you can see how much the bed is how much the uh the table is shaking by looking at my little uh, exacto knife over there 
Um, mm-hmm. Even with all that shaking, it was just as accurate as the easy ABL. You see right here, 0.0093. Um, and in fact, if we probably do it on the other side, I'm gonna go over to my uh, Octoprint and I'll come right back where we're gonna do a probe test on this side of the bed uh, to kind of uh, mitigate, so to speak, the, uh, the bed, uh, or the, rather the gantry warping or anything like that. Here we are doing the final steps on this side of the thing. And on this side, you see that um, we've kind of eliminated some of the gantry side, or rather we should have eliminated the gantry side by being on the left and hand side. And our uh, deviation is 0.007. This is again with this monstrosity just blasted in the way, shaking up the whole bed. Um, if this was done in, I would say, uh, more better conditions where there wasn't that much shaking going on, uh, that number would probably be much better. And I want to reiterate that the Prusa was not running when we were doing the, uh, the easy ABL thing. So the easy ABL actually had, should have had a little bit of an advantage over the uh, BL touch. But as you can see from the readings, my BL touch is much, much more accurate than the uh, easy ABL mini that uh, I have. So I wanted to rerun this test with the, uh, the Prusa turned off uh, to give it a little bit more fair reading. And what I'm expecting is this should be a little bit lower than when we had the Prusa just, you know, going around. Uh, I do want to still mention that the fan is still on. Uh, I know if you look at the firmware, which I'll actually link uh, down in the description, uh, the firmware tells you to turn off the fans and the heaters to get more accurate reading. Um, but that's not really uh, what I'm concerned about. So yep, as we expected, with everything turned off, our deviations 0.0053. Um, it's not as accurate as I think, but other people that have probably fine-tuned their printer uh, to have. Uh, but I think that number is still significantly less, uh, where it shouldn't really uh, impact leveling too too much. Um, but more importantly, it, it's. As you can see, it's the same printer, same everything, with the only difference being that uh, the Easy ABL was significantly more uh, inaccurate than this one. So here's the bed leveling done with the uh, BL Touch while the Prusa was running. So it was it has that inaccuracy that we kind of talked about. Um, overall, it's pretty good. It's really perfect in most of the locations, except for right here, which is the bed is a little bit too low, or the probe point is a little bit too high, rather, uh, around here. We're using UBL, so we could easily edit these out, uh, and I'm gonna edit it and then rerun this one again, see how it comes out. So overall, I mean, I think all up in here, with the exception of this one as well, um, it is pretty good adhesion and well within what I would consider acceptable ranges. So here it is with uh, the UBL mesh uh, edited with one pass. I only did a couple of the uh, points. Everything is pretty much uh, really good. There's still a little under uh, spots here, uh, which I'll edit out and I think that'll be more than fine. But overall, generally for overwhelmingly majority of the bed, it is more than acceptable right now uh, just using the BL touch. So here's the underside of our print. You can see there's slightly under in this part, right? But overall, it's still stuck to the bed. And that point, I believe, is one of the ones that didn't get probed using UBL. For those of you that don't know, UBL has, uh, it probes the, your bed, but there are certain points that it cannot probe due to the offset, and you actually calculate it automatically. So those of you that want to know UBL, I'll link the, the video in the description of Chris Riley's video that I used uh, to learn about UBL. I, I like UBL, it's really, intuitive, I, I personally prefer it over ABL. Uh, so yeah, anyway, so let's talk about the BL Touch versus Easy ABL. So let's do a comparison of the, uh, the BL Touch versus Easy ABL. In order to get the BL Touch working using the original Creality board, which is this thing, you get this, this pin 27 board. Uh, you can buy, I think, the, the whole kit for about uh, 30 bucks, I think, on Amazon. So you can probably get it cheaper elsewhere. Uh, and what you do is you plug this into this slot right here, and then you plug the BL Touch into these pins and your LCD screens into that. And in addition to that, you need a bootloader uh, kit like this, uh, where you plug it into your computer and you plug this end into the, the board and you flash a bootloader on there, and then you flash like whatever Marlin that you want. Um, that has like uh, ABL setup, so either bilinear or UBL or mesh edit or anything like that. 
So Easy ABL is kind of marketed as the plug and play easier version of ABL. Right? Ergo Easy ABL. What you do for the Easy ABL is you take the existing Z end stop right here. So this would have been attached to that little side part right there. You plug that in, you plug the remaining cable into this little pin and then you power this little mini board either using a dedicated power outlet right here or plugging in directly to the, uh, the motherboard using this white wire, uh, which are all provided for you, except for the dedicated one. You gotta buy that separately. Um, and then you essentially have a quote unquote ABL. Uh, this acts as a Z end stop, but you still don't, it's not really 100% accurate because you still need to flash a firmware on because without that, you won't have any sort of ABL in your Marlin. So you won't have UBL, you won't have bilinear, you're just gonna have essentially a inductive uh, Z end stop. So you still need this thing. You still need to flash uh, firmware. So you need to, you know, do all that mumbo jumbo. Um, yeah. So if, if you still had to do all that, right, which is just as difficult as, you know, plugging this pin in and just plugging, like it's pretty much the same thing, right? Why not just get this uh, for significantly cheaper than that? In fact, you could buy this, the SKR Mini E3, which I have inside, which gives you 32-bit support for Marlin 2.x for the same price as one of these. Kind of uh, doesn't make any sense, right? So with that being said, if you're in the market for a easy ABL or rather ABL setup, right? It's much better for to go with the uh, the BL Touch and the SKR Mini combo than it is to go with an easy ABL. Financially, it's not even a competition. Now, uh, I know people are probably gonna say there's something wrong with your, your printer, blah, blah, blah. Um, I don't really care too much, um, largely because if any issue exists with the printer, which clearly it does, because it's not as accurate as it should be. Um, if any issue existed with the printer, I would ex still expect something that I spent 70 bucks for to be more accurate than something that I spent like $20, right? Um, and I wanna say this printer is a little bit more advanced than what your typical E3, uh, Ender 3 Pro printer assembly is, right? I think most people are just gonna assemble their printer, see it work, see it moving around, and then just put an ABL on it. Um, I've obviously attempted to level the gantry, secure the carriage. Uh, I've done some work in the thing as well. Again, it's probably not 100% good work, but still it is a little bit more work than what your, your typical beginner would have done, right? So for that reason, I don't really care my things are, uh, are wonky because I can still do really good prints, right? Um, there's this thing that I did uh, that printed and you can see uh, did here it prints on it and this was supposed to be the, the cover for that. Um, it, it's pretty decent. Um, I've done plenty of other prints on it that, that, that worked out really well. So I don't really care about 100% of the accuracy. My point of this video is really more along the lines of that. This thing, which is twi twice to three times more expensive is not better than, uh, than this, at least, even if it was better, it's not significantly better than, than the BL Touch. So that's pretty much it for the video. Uh, I'm gonna go, go ahead and take this printer apart and attach my dual 5015 fan ducts on there. Uh, if Again, if I did something wrong in terms of the testing itself, maybe, you know, again, the easy ABL needs to be five millimeters off the bed, um, please let me know. Uh, I'll try to fix it and rerun these tests again. Uh, if not, uh, if this helped you out, let me know as well. Uh, until next time, peace. Quick, uh, just want to jump in, rearrange my printer out of the dual uh, 5015s. And as you can see by the standard deviation, we are now down to pretty accurate, 0 0.001. Um, this is, again, this is one one hundredth of a paper, right? So that's way more accurate than we really need. I mean, it's clearly enough accuracy, which really points out another uh, clearing issue with the easy ABL. Even if you get it more accurate than that, right? Do you really need it? The, the answer is probably not. So why spend twice the money to get 
not much accuracy out of it. 